Hi everyone, my name is Anka Selajan and I am a member of the Create Lab and the Camera Studio at the University of Bath. Today I will be presenting our paper entitled Meeting Your Virtual Twin, Effects of Photorealism and Personalization on Embodiment, Self-Identification and Perception of Self-Avatars in Virtual Reality. This paper has been created in collaboration with my co-authors, Eleanor Krellin, who is a studio engineer at Camera, Martin Parsons, who's a camera head of studio, uh, and my PhD supervisors, Darren Kosker and Dana Stanton Fraser. So before discussing uh, the specific details of our paper, I will briefly introduce some background information and key concepts that are central to our paper. So in this uh, study, embodiment was defined as the experience of, of inhabiting a body that consists of body ownership, agency, so being in control of one's movements, and self-location, so being located within the boundaries of one's body. And this bodily sensation can be experienced in relation to virtual avatars, following synchronous visual tactile, visual proprioceptive, or visual motor feedback. Uh, in this case, we employed uh, synchronous visual motor feedback. So essentially, all participants' motions were closely mimicked by their avatars in real time. Also, embodiment can be measured uh, both using standardized questionnaire and a range of other uh, behavioral and physiological measures, such as skin conductance responses. Here, both um, questionnaire responses and uh, skin conductance responses were employed. Following a very similar mechanisms, individuals can also experience self-identification with another's, uh, another person's face. And uh, in this way, embodiment and self-identification uh, are the two pillars of body perception. Um, so not only can individuals embody virtual avatars, but specific avatar features such as their level of photorealism and personalization could influence this sensation of embodiment and self-identification. And this has been subject to extensive research, which has produced somehow um, conflicting results. Here, we define photorealism as the quality of the graphics of avatars to resemble actual humans, as opposed to cartoonish or abstract versions of humans. And that is regardless of their identity. On the other hand, personalization is achieved when avatars um, closely resemble their users by maintaining their identity and specific appearance features, as opposed to resembling other individuals. In this study, photorealism was manipulated by changing the avatar's texture. And avatar personalization was achieved using a photogrammetry setup that consisted of 78 uh, camera array and our uh, avatar production pipeline. Uh, for more technical details, please refer back to our full paper. Looking at the picture on the slide, you can see how starting from um, a range of photographs of an individual, we have created personalized uh, avatars, uh, two version of such avatars, uh, number three, which is a high photorealism version, and number four, which is a lower photorealism version. And we have also purchased a generic avatar of a very similar uh, quality to the personalized avatar we produced. Um, and again, we manipulated the texture to obtain uh, number one, which is the high photorealism generic avatar, and number two, which is the low photorealism generic avatar. So in short, the starting point of this study is the creation of the participants' virtual twins. Embodying virtual twins will soon be easily achievable in consumer grade VR. What are digital twins? Uh, they are photorealistic and personalized avatars that are created so that they closely resemble their users. And in this study, we were interested to investigate if the level of photorealism and personalization can impact uh, how individuals uh, self-identify with these avatars, uh, as well as embodiment, uh, avatar perception variables such as like ability, visual appeal, eeriness, um, and presence in VR. 20 participants were individually scanned in a pre-experimental session, and then later they were invited back to the studio where they completed a two hour long uh, experimental session where they got to embody four different types of avatars, high photorealism personalized, high photorealism uh, generic. So this was very similar in quality to the personalized avatar, but um, the identity of the avatar did not match the one of the user. 
uh, low photorealism um, generic avatars and low photorealism personalized avatars. Um, so we were interested uh, in self-identification uh, and in order to investigate that, this aspect, we used the self-other distinction task. So individuals were pre uh, presented with um, a series of videos uh, that um, presented their face morphing into the four different types of avatars that they had just embodied uh, and the other way around. So that is starting from the avatar's face and morphing more towards their real face. Um, all participants were instructed to stop the video when they felt that the uh, face started to look their, like their real self or like the other, depending on the direction of the morphing video. Uh, so uh, the measure we took from this is the time that the video was stopped in seconds. For the high photorealism personalized avatar, uh, participants reported a higher uh, mid-immersion body ownership um, ratings compared to all other uh, conditions. Uh, for the embodiment variable that was taken at the end of each condition, participants uh, rated the uh, high photorealism avatars higher than the uh, lower photorealism avatars and the same for the personalized avatars compared to the um, generic avatars as well. In the self-identification task, uh, it was found that uh, participants took significantly longer to stop uh, the, the morphing videos uh, when um, the avatar that was morphing, um, you know, in the direction more towards the self or uh, the self to the avatar. And this suggests a stronger self-identification uh, bias with these uh, high photorealism and personalized avatars compared to the other three avatar types. You can say that photorealism and personalization were perceptually positive features in this study, and generally they led to increased embodiment, uh, and particularly body ownership, which is a key component of embodiment, um, and stronger self-identification with these avatars. Overall, this study contributed towards understanding the independent and collective influence that photorealism and um, personalization can have on uh, avatar perception and embodiment and self-identification with avatars, which are all very important in order to understand what the optimal VR experience would be for a user. So what are the next steps in this area of research? In the future, we would like to investigate the effects of avatar personalization and photorealism uh, beyond perception and more into uh, more complex uh, behavioral and cognitive patterns in VR, uh, such as prosocial behaviors, deceptive behaviors, and moral decision making. Moreover, we're also interested how repeated exposure to the personalized avatars could affect users' experience with their avatars and also uh, potentially their own body perception in the long run. Also, um, very importantly, um, we uh, are investigating how to best employ these avatars in applications for communication and potentially for clinical purposes as well. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, for more details, please refer to our paper. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me an email if you want to have a chat. Thank you.